Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. As the Israel-Hezbollah conflict is heating up again, fears of a wider regional war in the Middle East are also growing. A day after a rocket attack in an Israeli-occupied Syrian territory, Tel Aviv struck a number of Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. While the Iran-backed group denies any responsibility, the latest cross-border fires have been the deadliest in months of exchanges between the two sides. A rocket attack on a football field in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights has left 12 people dead in an area known for Druze population. Tel Aviv retaliated with a series of raids in several towns in Lebanon, saying its attacks were on Hezbollah sites. The Lebanese media reported that at least two were killed in an Israeli drone attack. The country's foreign minister said it had received assurances from concerned countries that responses from both sides would be limited. While nations, including the US and UK, made travel warnings to its citizens, flights were also interrupted in Lebanon. Tensions have simmered on the Israeli-Lebanon border ever since Tel Aviv launched its genocidal war on Gaza last October. The latest escalation comes as Israel and Hamas are negotiating a ceasefire proposal. And for more on the latest from the Israel-Hezbollah conflict, joining me now from Doha is Mashub Zuweri. He is a professor at Qatar University. And from Islamabad, political analyst Hanan Hussein. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the uh, program. So, uh, Mashub, what do we know so far about the deadly rocket attack on the Golan Heights uh, football field, which killed 12 people? Well, basically, there is an exchange of accusation. Um, Israelis accuse Hezbollah. Hezbollah um, um, uh, rejected that. And um, um, under all of this, um, Israelis seem, uh, seem to be ready to um, attack. Um, the uh, government, the security cabinet has decided the nature of the target, but they are uh, you know, about decide about the timing. Um, I think what has uh, caused a delay is the protest inside Israel yesterday, which is attacking the military base uh, because of the Palestinian ab um, abuse. So I think there was some um, internal politics of Israel has delayed the attack. Of course, there is a huge debate um, between exchange ideas between Americans, the Lebanese, uh, French, um, different capitals to uh, try to, uh, I would say, contain the mm -hmm. uh, escalation. Um, but um, so far, uh, there's two things important. One, there is uh, agreement on de-escalation, uh, trying to uh, convince Israelis to be very limited on their uh, attack, and also Hezbollah should be responsible and very limited on their reaction. And this is a similar uh, scenario of the Israeli-Iranian uh, uh, counterattacks. So, uh, Hannah, uh, what are we looking at right now? Uh, do you believe an all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah is imminent now? I don't think an all-out war is imminent. Um, I think I'd, ar I'd argue to the contrary. I think that both sides have it in their best interest to avoid an all-out escalation. If you look at the fact that the Lebanese foreign minister just said that mm. they're already expecting a limited attack from the Israeli side and that they've received similar assurances from Hezbollah itself. So that tells you a lot about uh, what kind of a common ground is currently being occupied between international mediators led by the United States. Israel, which would not want to open up another front at a time when its military is wearing thin in Gaza, and also Hezbollah, which uh, would obviously want to flex its muscle when it comes to cross-border attacks, but avoid any sort of a direct signal that gives way to a larger regional war, which would be counterproductive to their current interests. Uh, so, Mashup, as Hanan, uh, as you've mentioned, Lebanon's uh, foreign minister said he received assurances uh, from concerned countries that responses both uh, from the both sides would be limited. So, do you agree with Hanan that there is a common ground uh, between the two sides? And what do these daily attacks then seek to achieve? I think none of them um, is interested to have a long-term uh, uh, confrontation. Um, Israelis. Uh, they are not on a good shape militarily, politically, um, and globally. Uh, they are stretched in terms of military. Uh, they already, this morning, um, withdraw from Khan Yunus because of the uh, loss of their uh, soldiers and, 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 the loss and, and the destruction of their uh, arm, um, the tanks and, 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 uh, and equipment. Uh, and I think Hezbollah also, as not a state actor within Lebanese government, within Lebanese politics, has no interest to have to uh, bring war to the country, because this also will undermine its own its own legitimacy and and the presence. Um, I think they are interested both sides to show they are they are capable. Hezbollah have uh, has already highlighted this in many uh, on on videos they have uh, podcasted and, and podcasted 
in the last two weeks. Um, and Israel also wanted to assure to make sure that Hezbollah is can be managed. Um, I think those counterattacks uh, is, is coming in the context of war in Gaza. Hezbollah has made it clear that if war in Gaza stopped today, there will be no attacks from Hezbollah. Yes. So they look they look at this um, kind of attacks in the context of Gaza war, uh, and they consider it uh, uh, you know uh, an obligation to support the Palestinian in Gaza. So Anam, what do you make of the international community's efforts to prevent a larger war in the region? Because we know that France has called on Iran uh, to avoid regional military escalation. So what's the Iranian position on this latest uh, tensions? The Iranian position, I think, even if you judge by their rhetoric, you'll understand that um, a lot depends on how Israel is going to react. Uh, Iran obviously would want to maintain uh, a popular sort of a face which gives the vibes of a of a strongman posture, both from Hezbollah and from Iran, to say, OK, we're prepared for anything. But but underneath the optics, you see a lot will be determined based on how Israel basically comes forward with what it calls as being a strong attack. We know that the United States, in terms of international efforts, has been trying to not exactly avoid Israeli retaliation, but to ensure that uh, the attack spares Beirut, spares um, a key civilian infrastructure, um, you know, avoids any mass loss of civilians' uh, lives as well. So I think with that sort of a contest, I think um, a larger long-term engagement with Hezbollah was signal Iran's involvement. Uh, the fact that uh, Israelis are currently being constrained by international mediators suggests that Iran would uh, offer tall rhetoric um, for, for a start, but not exactly beyond that, unless Hezbollah is forced into a longer term engagement with Israel. So, Madhub, if tensions aren't contained anytime soon, could this lead to the partitioning of Lebanon? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, looking at the situation now in, in Lebanon, Lebanon already in a politically is is, is, a, is a, in a a critical situation in terms of um, the state. Uh, there is no government. There is an active government now for 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 a long time. Um, Hezbollah has been criticized uh, for all of their actions, um, uh, and I think there is a level of criticism also to the government why they are not doing enough to convince Hezbollah. It's obvious that Hezbollah, in terms of military capabilities, is is forcing itself as an important player. It's hard to. Uh, convinced in the light of this uh, war in Gaza. And I think all of the state actors, including Houthis and, and Hezbollah, they consider this uh, a, a religious obligation to support uh, Palestine and Gaza. And I think um, because of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, perception of this war in Gaza as a global, because of support, American support, Western support to Israelis, uh, those non state actors perceive uh, what they are doing also as uh, something uh, uh, acceptable um, uh, to, to support the Palestinians in Gaza. And I think that add more, uh, I would say, complication to the situation in, in the region. Um, in the light of all of this liquidity of international politics and lack of leadership across the globe, unfortunately. So, Hanan, how could these uh, latest tensions between Israel and Hezbollah and the protests uh, within Israel affect the trajectory of the Gaza conflict? I mean, will it have an immediate effect on the political landscape in the region, especially on Netanyahu's political feature? Two things. I think when you talk about the ceasefire, I think there's going to be, and that's definitely consideration. Why? Because um, a secession of hostilities, um, more frankly, an end to Israel's genocide and a ceasefire agreement in any shape would signal uh, constraint from Hezbollah, would signal constraint from other actors, which international mediators uh, currently want to see constraint. So I think there's a stake there. Uh, should escalations take place, and obviously that'll compound efforts for a ceasefire to be reached. You talk about Netanyahu, again, uh, a couple of things to bear in mind. First of all, we heard from the United Nations Special Rapporteur as well that Netanyahu is principally holding up the ceasefire talk. So I think even when you talk about, when you take the Hezbollah angle out of it, Netanyahu is under uh, significant domestic pressure, A, to strike a deal, B, to deliver on tall promises which are never really reached. We did not see the hostages being returned back. We did see, uh, you know, lines of protest when he went to Washington and a very controversial speech as well which signaled uh, public opposition both uh, within Israel and beyond to say that uh, it's Netanyahu kind of bringing Israel's broader objectives into conflict. So I think uh, should escalations take place, it'll compound Washington's efforts to strike a ceasefire deal, which already is being held up by Netanyahu. Um, so he's on very thin ice. And I think that is precisely what may uh, may lead to some sort of uncertainty about the nature of attack coming from Israel, because, of course, the U.S. says it is trying to constrain it. 
But as we've seen for 10 months of, of, of Israel's genocide in Gaza, that Netanyahu tends to use his own mind as well. And I think that reckless behavior would be something that would uh, be absolutely pivotal, whether or not this becomes a regional war. And meanwhile, Mahjoub, uh, Turkish-Israeli relations have fallen again uh, to a new law. Uh, law. Uh, what do you make of this latest spat with the, uh, between the two uh, countries over Israeli atrocities in Gaza? And are countries' relations heading to a point of no return this time? I mean, the, the, this is nothing new about uh, the relation between the two countries. Um, it, the two countries witnessed this kind of um, upside down of the relations. Um, and I think um, I would consider this time in the country, it, it is normally the context of the conflict because Israelis is no longer um, with this pressure on them, with this uh, damage to the uh, image of Israel globally, with this kind of criticism globally from inter, uh, countries and international organizations. Um, with this criticism pub publicly from uh, people and across the globe, they are no longer ready to accept any kind of criticism. And I think this, this reflects a crisis within Israeli politics um, and their uh, strong belief of exceptionalism. They are yes. exception. They are people. They should look at them differently. I think the world has changed and they should be ready to be criticized and accept that criticism. So, Hanana, I need a very quick answer for that. I mean, how would a worsened relationship between Turkey and Israel affect the ongoing uh, conflicts in the Middle East moving forward? I think it will. I think Israel has realized until now that it needs to have, uh, you know, um, slightly, I'd say, workable relations with key regional powers if it's to avoid a reckless act. I think Turkey going a bit overt in that sense uh, kind of signifies the importance of this relationship. So it cannot afford greater isolation. And I think one thing which we've seen over the past months is that um, the United States principal supporter of Israel is having trouble uh, as it looks to alienate, um, you know, partners in the region. So I think Turkey Israel's relationship from a pragmatic lens would be consequential. And I think Israel needs to keep that in mind going forward. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.